friends so in this particular video i will be taking up one concept called as exponential moving averages which has historically troubled ca final students in understanding and getting a grip on what exactly that is what has ica had done what are the calculations there students i will be teaching that entire thing conceptually to you here yes in the new syllabus also may 18 paper and even now november 19 paper this question has come in the old syllabus of course it was there it was there in the security analysis old practice manual it is there in your new study material also okay so students this is one such question that troubles you all and second question students that must have troubled you is a question that you will find immediately after this question of exponential moving averages in the ici material and that question is the question based on efficient market hypothesis two tailed runs test degree of freedom level of significance number of runs plus minus something like that you must have seen and after seeing it you must have said oh my god does it come in our exams students that question is also there in your new study material so both these questions we need to understand correctly in this video i am only going to touch the exponential moving averages part in a coming up video i will be definitely taking for you efficient market hypothesis also okay so let's now start exponential moving averages okay students so this data is there in front of you now i have kept this data so that i can explain to you with the help of this data this beautiful concept of exponential moving averages students before i go on to the concept of exponential moving averages i just want to tell you first of all what is an average okay see there is this security x okay in the past 16 days this security has had these share prices at day end okay at every day closure this security x had share prices 100 110 120 and so on and the 16th day that is the last observation that we have we have got the price as rupees 200 everybody following now students let's say that 16th day is the day that just got over and we are sitting at the end of day 16 and we are thinking about day 17 what will x give or basically what will be the share price of x at the end of day 17 that is in this coming day today it is already day 16 end day 16 ended with the share price being 200 i am now thinking what will be the share price tomorrow that is day 17 end now for that students what option do we have to estimate can i say the only option we have been taught till now throughout portfolio management chapter in case you are done with it is the normal simple average that is summation x by n i hope you remember we will just take the observation starting from observation 1 to observation 16 the entire chunk we will summate and we'll take a simple average by dividing by n n here means 16 observations correct so some summation of the entire 16 observations divided by 16 will give you a simple average correct it's a simple average simple average students for this particular concept i would like to name it as static average okay why it is called static average i'll teach you later but trust me that the average that you know you have been doing since long the summation x by n that you have been doing since long children that average for this particular concept i will be naming it as static average till here everyone is clear great so we can easily calculate the static average for the past 16 observations and find out how much is expected in day 17 what will be the share price of day 17 till here everyone is clear now that you know what a static average is and how it is used to estimate let us now move one step ahead and understand what a moving average is not static static means one place one shot one set of data taken and taken a simple average correct students instead of static now we are moving to moving averages once you understand what a moving average is then i can teach you very easily what an exponential moving average is can we start now i'll just remove all the markings for you all so that you can get clarity okay students now listen to me extremely carefully i am going to now teach you something called as a 5 day moving average okay 5 day moving average children to understand the 5 day moving average mathematically is very simple but to understand the depth of it to understand it conceptually you need to also understand this graphically without which it becomes very difficult to understand what is a moving average trying to explain okay so before i go on to the mathematical part of moving averages let me first of all plot this entire data of x on a graph this actual values of x on a graph where the graph will be where the y axis are the share prices of x the x axis 
are the number of days okay or basically the periods of observation can we start so we have the y axis as the share price of x and the x axis as the number of days can we start so students let us now plot the data okay students so this is your data of x on a graph everybody following on a graph can you see it has gone up down up down up down and that two steep curves are there this graph this curve that you see on your screens is the curve is the graph made out of coordinates of actual prices of x everybody clear these are actual prices of x and therefore we understand that x has gone through a lot of ups and downs in their life okay now students that we have completed the plotting of the coordinates on the graph let us now go on to understand the concept of averages can we start students as far as average is concerned tell me again what is static average static average is nothing but the simple average of the entire 16 observations correct let us take the calcium first of all find that average what it is so students if we take the simple average the static average of this entire data that is summation x by n we will end up with a value 126.875 what is 126.875 it is the simple static average of the entire 16 day observation can we start now if i plot this 126.875 on a graph let's see how it appears okay students as you can see on the graph that static average that simple average is cutting the observations exactly in center can you see that it is cutting the observations exactly in center because it is the simple average of all the observations everybody following in fact because of that if you remember your portfolio management when you do year x and x minus x bar in case you have done portfolio management then only listen to this okay so when you have year 1 2 3 4 and x so and so this x bar which is the simple average yes you don't do x minus x bar column because you do x minus x bar the whole square the whole point why you do whole square is because if you don't square it children then the summation of x minus x bar will be zero listen to this x minus the average summation of this will be zero why because if x bar the static average the simple average the mean if it is cutting all observations exactly in center then all the values of x above the mean and below the mean will be same which means the positive deviations and the negative deviations will be same the summation of them have to be zero correct that is why students we square it so that we can get some value at least the plus minus signs everything becomes plus i hope you understand when you square the deviations the entire data becomes positive correct so the point is static average always and always will cut all the observations exactly in center okay students so now that we have understood static average and the actual values of x let us finally go on to understand moving averages okay so moving averages here five day moving averages let me teach you five day moving average means what let us take the first five day observations okay now if i take the first five day observations and i take a simple average of the first five days it is 100 Plus hundred and ten, plus one twenty, plus one fifty, plus two hundred divided by five. That comes to one thirty six. So one thirty six students is my five day moving average for the first five days. Everybody following? What was the static average we had got? If you remember, it was one twenty six point eight seventy five. You remember this? One twenty six point eight seventy five is also simple average. This one thirty six is also simple average. What is the difference between both? This one thirty six is a simple average of only five observations, and one twenty six point eight seventy five is a simple average of sixteen observations. Now, children, tell me what is one twenty six point eight seventy five? It was the simple average you received at the end of day sixteen, correct? And therefore, you forecasted that for For day seventeen, we feel that the average price would be one twenty six point eight seventy five because on an average in the past sixteen observations, the value is one twenty six point eight seventy five. Everybody following? Similarly, here we have got one thirty six as a simple average. This one thirty six is a simple average as on end of which date? As on end of day five, correct? So therefore, if one thirty six is the simple average at the end of day five, do you realize this is the forecasted share? price for the next day that is day 6 correct so i'll say that end of day 5 i got a simple average of 136 of the past five observations which means in the coming day that is day 6 correct in day 6 i am estimating i am forecasting as on end of day 5 i am forecasting for day 6 that the forecasted price would be 
136. Everybody clear with this? Now, this 136 that you wrote, is day 6 already over when you wrote this 136? No, day 5 is over. At the end of day 5, I am forecasting the day 6 price. Everybody clear with this? Great. Now, children, tell me what will you do next? I now am sitting at the end of day 6 now. Day 6 has just come to an end and the share price is now 90 rupees. Are you there? The share price is now 90. We are thinking what to take as the forecast now at the end of day 6 for day 7. Everybody following? On day 6 end, I want to calculate the forecast for day 7. Can we start? How to do that? Students, if you understand the meaning of the name 5 day, 5 day moving average means now what do you think you will do? You will definitely be taking the 5 day averages starting from year to year, correct? Day 2 to day 6. Now this will not come because this is now historical beyond our range, okay? We are taking only a 5 day average. So if you take the Kelsey, 110 plus 120 plus 150 plus 200 plus 90 divided by 5 if I do I get 134 students where to write this 134 this 134 you will obviously write at the end of day 6 correct because at the end of day 6 you got this average of 134 which is a forecast share price for which day the next day that is day 7 everybody following that means at the end of day 6 I realize that the forecast for day 7 would be 134 based on the past 5 observations from day 6 to 5 days earlier everybody clear with this now students like that can I say we can do one more and one more and one more we can go on and on I will show you one last observation please pay attention if I am calculating the 5 day moving average at end of day 7 do you realize it will be these five numbers correct starting from end of day 3 to end of day 7 so it will be 120 plus 150 plus 200 plus 90 plus 50 divided by 5 it comes to 122 where should I write 122 first end of day 7 correct so end of day 7 I got a simple average of past five observations as 122 and this therefore becomes the forecast for the next day that means at end of day 7 I'm sitting and thinking that end of day 8 the share price will be 122 everybody following like that I will now write down the numbers the values of each of the coming observations can we start okay students so with that we have calculated the moving averages for each observation 5 5 day moving averages and according to this concept the forecast for day 17 is 90 and not 126.875 126.875 was on the basis of static average static average gave you right 126.875 at the end of day 16 that is the forecast for day 17 as far as moving average is concerned, it is saying it is not 126.875, it is 90 only. Everybody clear with this? Yes, this 90 of course you must have got at the end of day 16, which must be the previous 5 days simple average. Till here everything is clear. Now children, let us pick up this moving averages data and plot it in the same graph, yes, in which we have already taken the actual x and the static average. Let us also introduce the moving average there. Can we start? Yes, students have plotted this moving average on a graph with this red pen. Students, can you see the moving average? See, now the point I want to explain to you here is the moving average is neither as over reactive as the actual x nor is it as in inertia no movement as the static that is why the static is called as static because there is no movement it's a dead line correct but as far as the moving average is concerned can you see it is moving yes it might not be moving as steep as the actual x but yes it is moving everybody following now the point you should know here is why is the moving average not moving as steep as the actual x it is not moving as steep as the actual x because students it is a 5 5 year average everybody following and because of the averaging impact the steep slopes are not seen everybody clear can you see here look at this here you will be able to notice as x goes this high the moving average also does go high but it doesn't touch sky limit like that because the averages are not based on one value of x right the averages are based on past five values of x all of them have equal weight correct because you do summation x by n everyone last five observations are given equal weights so as to calculate the average and therefore this particular outcome of average that comes is because of an impact 
effect of five observations due to which one observation going up will not pull up the entire average to that extent. Yes, it might go up. Yes, I'm not saying no, but it will not go up as much because there are five others who are contributing to the average. Everybody following? In fact, this is why. And listen to me carefully. This is why this moving average students is also called as a process of smoothening. What is it called as? Smoothening. I will write it down here. S M O O T H E N I N G smoothening process. You can see the X has been so steep up and down, but this average is a smoothened out process. Everybody clear? Let's see how many of you are intelligent. Do you realize that had I taken not a five day average, but a 10 day average, 10 day moving average, correct? Just as here we took five, five days at a time for the purpose of calculating average, we could have taken 10, 10 days at a time also for calculating average. Do you realize therefore such an average of a 10 day moving average calculation if plotted on a graph would have been smoother than this because now there are 10 observations that are impacting the average. Everybody following? I generally give this example. Let's say there is a person A. Okay, this person A judges everybody, but the problem with him is he judges everybody based on their immediate last reaction. So, if there is a Mr. B, that Mr. B is behaving very nicely, Mr. A will say, oh, look at Mr. B, so nice he is. Next day, Mr. B doesn't behave nicely, Mr. A will say, oh, so bad he is. So, Mr. A, because he is taking last one single observation of that person to judge that person's behavior, character, nature, personality, etc. for Mr. A, Mr. B's graph will go up, down, up, down, up, down, correct? based on Mr. B's immediate last behaviors. But let's say there is a Mr. C. Mr. C also judges everybody, but he judges everybody based on his experience of last, let's say, five years with a person. So, if Mr. B has behaved bad today, okay, if Mr. B doesn't behave nicely, Mr. C will immediately not be discounting this Mr. B, oh look, he's bad, go down. No, Mr. C will say, oh, last five years, look at his behavior, okay, considering the last five years' behaviors and this last immediate behavior, he adds it to it and then takes an average behavior, that average behavior, can I say, will not be as steep as what Mr. A must be thinking of Mr. B, correct? Because Mr. A is not taking an average behavior. Mr. A is only talking of the last immediate behavior. But Mr. C on the other hand, because he sees a five-year observation and therefore judges, can I say will not be so much taking an extreme position on each day behavioral changes. Everybody following? That is exactly what is happening. This red line you see here, this red graph, this red curve you see here on your screens, this is like a Mr. C's observation of the share, whereas the blue graph you see, the blue curve you see is like Mr. A's observation of the share. Everybody following? A takes only one observation at a time, C takes five observations at a time, which is why C's judgment of the share is slightly smoother as compared to A. Everybody clear? This is the concept of moving averages. One more thing I can tell you about moving averages is that, students please pay attention, see. Let's say the share price has touched here, okay, focus on this. The share price has touched here. You know that the average is somewhere here at that same time, correct? Now, because the average is higher than the reality, I'll again repeat, because the average as of this date is higher than the reality, can I say this is the time to buy the share. Everybody following? This is the time to buy the share because you also therefore understand that someday or other the reality will converge with the average. Now if the average is upstairs here and reality is down, do you realize someday when they converge, which means this share price will go up. The average will not come down so steep, correct? Average is smooth. So this reality will definitely hit the average someday and the moment it touches the average, in fact goes up, that is the time you should sell off your share. This this is another purpose for which these moving averages are used. Everybody following? Another purpose for which moving averages are used is to find out the general trend of this company. Now, as far as this particular company is concerned, the trend is disturbing. I cannot exactly tell you whether it is bullish or bearish because sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, correct? This company, in fact, I took this steep turns example so that I could explain to you the smoothening concept. But in majority cases, you will see that the moving average graph is either slowly going up or slowly going down, correct? That gives a bullish or bearish idea about a share. Even though the actual share prices might be going up and down, the moving averages might be showing an upward or downward trend. 
here it's an extreme case students i showed you i'm very sure you understand extreme cases are happening here from where to where the share price is falling from where to where the share price is increasing in a day so for such extreme cases students you will not be able to judge from the red graph that is the moving average whether the share is going up or down it's a bullish or bearish share but in general life this moving average is where the share prices don't go so steep up and down you will be able to see yes whether it is bullish or bearish till your everyone is understanding now that you have understood moving averages let us now go to the last part that is understanding exponential moving averages can we start okay students so let's start this concept of exponential moving averages students look at this data day one end the share price is 100 correct and therefore what this 100 must be this must be the forecast you must have done one day before day one for day one everyone understanding this forecast definitely must have been happened this forecast definitely must have been calculated one day before day one correct that before day one when we were sitting we forecasted that in day one hundred will happen and then students in day one actually also hundred happened for example can we from here on pick up the concept of exponential moving averages let's start so students can I say I now want to know the forecast not of day one but the forecast of day two which obviously we will calculate at end of day one everybody following averages obviously will calculate at end of day one for a forecast of day two everybody clear with this let us now see how exponential moving averages takes the forecast can we start students how does a static average take forecast straight away takes the entire data and averages it how does a moving average take forecast depends on how many years you are taking in the moving average five years at a time or ten years at a time or seven years at a time that depends on the question yes so you know what is a static average you know what is the moving average let us now understand what is an exponential moving average theme is same at the end of a particular day we will be calculating the average which we will be taking as the forecast for the next day everybody clear with this now students understand what is the formula for calculating exponential moving average for day one which will be the forecast for day two can we start so students please pay attention ema calculations the formula of ema is f t is equal to f t minus one plus a t minus one minus f t minus 1 the whole into an alpha component students let us first understand the individual terms t refers to the time period f refers to the forecast so f t means calculation of a forecast for time period t a refers to the actual data and t minus 1 i'm very sure if t is let's say period 6 t minus 1 will be period 5 and so on correct children tell me we are looking for f what we are looking for f2 everybody following we are looking for forecast for day 2 correct students if you are looking for forecast for day 2 do you realize we are looking for f2 correct here t the time period is day 2 what will be the formula f t minus 1 means f1 plus a t minus 1 means can i say again a1 minus f1 and let's say the alpha students is 0.2 more about alpha i'll teach later right now let us put 0.2 as the alpha can we start so we have all the numbers now let's check so we have the forecast of day one as 100 and the actual can i say this x here is actual data correct so the actual data is also 100 so can i say f1 is 100 plus a1 is again 100 f1 we know is 100 into 0.2 this will come to 100 which means forecast for day two children is taken as 100 straight away everyone can we start so at the end of day one i say that my forecast for the next day is 100 which therefore i will write down as the forecast for day two as 100 everybody clear with this now students you have to understand something very very interesting please pay attention focus on this forecast of 100 this is the forecast for which day day one correct this is the forecast for day one okay this forecast did you calculate at the end of day one or at the end of the day before day one obviously at the end of the day before day one let's say the day is day zero okay so at end of day zero you calculated the average as 100 and that you forecasted for day one everybody following so at day zero end 
you are saying that day one will have a share price of 100 and then when day one actually happened the share price of x actually was also 100 which means the forecast that you took at end of day zero when you didn't know what x would be at end of day one correct proved to be right once day one actually ended everybody following so at the end of day one we look back and say oh my god i had thought that x would give 100 at end of day one and at the end of day one really also x gave 100 which means there is no error in my forecast everybody following so if there is no error in my forecast children do you realize the next forecast also will be taken same only as the previous forecast everybody following which is why this formula they say f2 will be equal to f1 only ha, plus if there is any error but since there is no error a1 and f1 can i say a1 and f1 are same do you realize f1 itself becomes f2 everybody clear with this let us now see the next students this 100 when did you calculate can i say we calculated it here perfect we had taken f2 as 100 and that we wrote at the end of day 1 as 100 which was a forecast for day 2 everybody following till here now children please pay attention you at the end of day 1 said that day 2 will have a share price of 100 but when day 2 actually happened the share price wasn't 100 it was 110 everyone agreeing with this now children tell me is there an error in your forecast for day two yes there is an error of 10 rupees correct you had thought you had forecasted you had estimated the value to be 100 for day two but the actual value turned out to be 110 so now children my question to you is can we take the forecast of day three also as 100 or something else obviously something else because now in this 100 we spotted an error of rupees 10 everyone following we spotted an error of rupees 10 so if that error also has to be now taken into consideration students then what i have to do i will say okay okay 100 is wrong in reality it has come 110 which means i will now take average as 110 and therefore the forecast for the next day is 110 can i say if i do this you are being too harsh on the average there is no smoothening smoothening means there isn't any gradual introduction insertion of the error in your forecast correct you're straight away taking the x values if you do that then students i'm very sure you also understand your average will also be as steeply curved as x everybody understanding so students directly do not take the x value as the average think pause do you realize remember moving averages in moving averages do you remember you don't directly take the x as the average you take the past five years past 10 years average as the average i hope you realize and therefore the curve was smooth similarly here also there is a moving average children how many years moving average i'll tell later as of now we are talking of not a simple moving average but an exponential moving average let's see how it works students after that you will get complete clarity on what are the number of years etc which are embedded in this exponential moving averages can we start so students 110 we will not take obviously we will be taking something else let's see i hope you people realize i am now looking for f3 which i will be writing and calculating at the end of day two and i'm very sure you know that when i'm calculating f3 i do not know 120 because 120 will be happening at the end of day three i am right now sitting at the end of day two and calculating the average can we start so students i go to the calculation sheet again so let's now write down the formula for f3 f3 formula will be ft minus 1 which means f2 plus at minus 1 means a2 minus ft minus 1 that is f2 into alpha that is 0 0.2 can you put numbers now f2 what is forecast of day 2 100 again correct i'll write down 100 plus something minus 100 into 0 0.2 i hope you understood what is a2 a2 came to 110 so i'll write down here 110 so what it is doing here is it is saying yes it will be 100 that is the previous year's forecast yes no doubt about it 
plus the error. Now, how much is the error here? Can I say 10 rupees is the error? But out of the 10 rupees, for the purpose of smoothening out the error introduction in my average, only 20% of the error, that is 0.2 of the error, is now inserted inside the forecasted average. Everybody following? So, it is 10 into 0.2, that is 2. And I will say that my forecast for day 3 is 102 instead of 110. 110 means you are again following x. 102 means now you are smoothening it out. Everybody following? There is a smoothening happening. That is why one another name of this alpha is smoothening exponent. Everybody listening? Smoothening exponent. And because we use this smoothening exponent for the purpose of calculating the forecast, for the purpose of calculating the average, that is why we call this process as the exponential based moving averages. Everyone understanding? So, only 102 will take. So, here I will now write at the end of day 2 that my forecast for the next day is 102. Everybody clear? Now, children, let's do it quickly. Tell me, on day 3, what actually happened? 120 happened. You had forecasted at the end of year 2 that day 3 would give 102, but actually 120 happened. Children, what will I do? Can I say there is an error of 18 rupees? I hope you are understanding. 18 rupees error. Now, of that error, can I say only 20 percent I will be taking in the next day's forecast? So, if you take 18, how did I get 18? 120 minus 102. So, there is an error of 18. 18 into 0.2, if I do 3.6, 3.6 is positive error, correct? Because 120 is A, F is 102, A minus F is positive 18. On that 18, I multiply by 0 0.2 alpha, I get 3.6. That 3.6 children, I will add to the original forecast, the previous observation forecast that is 102. If I add, I get 105.6, which I now take as the average at the end of day 3 as a forecast for end of day 4. 105.6. Everybody clear? So, students, I will write down here in terms of formula it is F4 is equal to tell me how much it will be F3 plus A3 minus F3 into alpha. So, if I put the numbers, my F3 is how much children? My F3, if you remember, was 102. So, 102 plus actual 3 is 120. So, 120 minus 102 into 0 0.2. 120 minus 102 into 0.2 plus 102 will give me 105.6. Everyone understanding? In this fashion, we can complete this entire column of exponential moving averages, which will therefore be the forecast of the immediate next year. Everyone following the concept of exponential moving averages. Now, students, one last thing. See, students, this one concept I want to explain to you last point about alpha. Students regarding alpha, you should know that alpha is nothing but 2 upon n plus 1, okay? 2 upon n plus 1, where n refers to the number of periods or the number of days you want to take a moving average for. So, therefore, this 0 0.2 must have been calculated with some n. I am not going into the maths by doing 0 0.2 is equal to 2 upon n plus 1, find n. Anybody can do that, but I am not going into that. Understand the conceptual point here. Do you realize that higher the number of periods or number of days you take, for calculating the moving average, lower will be the smoothening exponent, correct? And lower the smoothening exponent students, do you realize lower will be the proportion of the error that will enter into the next forecast and therefore more smoothening will happen, correct? See, if the error, entire error is taken into the next forecast, then the curve becomes very steep. But if only a proportion of the error is taken into the next forecast, we know smoothening happens, correct? Now, if the proportion of the error to be taken into the next forecast, also reduces, do you realize the smoothening will be more? Now, when will the proportion of the error to be taken in the next forecast reduce? Students, it will reduce only when the smoothening component, smoothening exponent is lower. When will this be lower? When the number of periods, number of days for which you are taking average will increase. Everybody following? So, therefore, do you realize higher the period of averaging you are taking, more smoothening will happen. Yes? So, this is one limited point I wanted to explain to you about this alpha. Okay, they will give you the x values, the day, etc. You have 
have to calculate the moving average and therefore that only becomes the forecast for the next period nothing else even the alpha will be given to you in the question everyone following okay friends so now let's check out this question i was talking about from the ici material asked in the recent exams also students i request everyone to pause the video and read this question carefully it is based on exponential moving averages start Okay, students, I hope you all read the question. Let us now try to understand it. Please pay attention. Closing values of BSc Sensex from 6th to 17th day of the month of January for the year 2009 were as follows. Okay, so they are telling you that Sensex, that is the index, their values they have given to you for 6th to 17th day of January. Students, they are saying on 6th Jan, the Sensex points are 14,522. In my example, you saw earlier, I gave you the prices of the shares share called X. Here, they have given to us the prices or the values of the index that is Sensex, correct? So, let this be X. I hope you understand. So, day 7, they have given the value. These are, I am very sure you understand the actual values, not the forecasted values, correct? No trading days we need not look at, correct? Then 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th. Then again 14, 15 and 16, no trading and then 17th. Everyone following? Then they say calculate exponential moving averages of Sensex during the above period. The 31 days simple moving average of Sensex can be assumed as 15,000. The value of exponent for 31 days EMA is 0 0.062. Give detailed analysis on the basis of your calculation. Everyone following the question? So let's start understanding this. So what they are telling you students, they have given to you the dates, they have given to you the actual values. Just focus on these two columns, date and actual value of x that is sensex and using the students you have to find out the exponential moving averages everyone following and for that they have given to you the value of alpha also that is an exponent as they say that is 0 0.062 can we start you know how to do it let's quickly complete this so i'll write down now here the solution okay what columns will i make i'll make a column first of date then i'll write down the actual sensex value that is x then i'll write down the calculation okay We'll show the calculation here only. Then I will get the exponential moving average and then I'll get the forecast, correct? I hope you understood students. So first date I will take students in this particular calculation is the date 6, correct? So on date 6, what is the actual value of the Sensex? The actual value is 14,522. So I'll write down here 14,522. Everybody following till here? Now children, do you realize that to do the calculation of EMA, what is the formula? FT is equal to FT minus 1 plus actual t minus 1 minus forecast t minus 1 the whole into alpha i hope you remember okay students so now that your formula is ready let us try to put in the numbers students do you realize that we now want the f6 correct f6 means forecast for date 6 forecast for date 6 do you realize must have been written here why am i saying must have been written because do you realize considering the entire video you have seen till here that the forecast of date 6 must have been calculated at date 5. Everyone understanding? Date 5 means basically one period before 6 because the EMA we calculate one period before 6 is the forecast for 6, correct? Now students, do you have the data of the period before 6? You don't have. Are you there with me? You don't have the data of one period before 6 because students, your data itself starts at date 6 itself, correct? So now what should I do? How do I get the forecast of date 6? Because without the forecast of date 6, I cannot go ahead i cannot take the future forecasts i hope you follow because the future forecast will obviously depend on the previous forecast also right so if i don't have the previous forecast that is if i don't have the forecast of date six how can i go ahead students don't worry about the previous data they have in the question itself given to you the forecast of date six i'll tell you where this at the end that they say that the 31 day simple moving average they're giving to you the average of sensex can be assumed as 15,000 
thousand. Now students, you also know, I also know, we are doing moving averages. How can there be one average for the entire question? Obviously not correct. Moving averages means it will keep moving, which means this fifteen thousand must be the average that must have been calculated one period before date six for the forecast of date six. Everyone following? So therefore, I will write down here the date six forecast was fifteen thousand. Everyone following? Which must have been calculated one period before in the EMA column. Correct. Now children, tell me. Now that you have the forecast of date six, which you must have calculated earlier, and now that date six happens, do you realize date six actual value is fourteen thousand five twenty two? Is there an error in your forecast? Of course, yes. You had thought. You had forecasted. You had estimated the date six value will be fifteen thousand, but the actual value came to only fourteen thousand five hundred two. Therefore, there is an error, and we need to insert this error into our next forecast that is for date seven. Everyone clear with this? So, students, what do you think I'm going to calculate here? Is this the forecast for date six? Or for the next date, that is date seven. Of course, for the next date, correct? We calculate the forecast of date seven on date six. That is different. Can we start? So, students, for that, I will do the calculations now. F seven equal to students. F seven will be equal to F six. What is F six? Fifteen thousand. So, I'll write down here fifteen thousand plus. Tell me what will I do here? Fifteen thousand plus what? What is the A T minus one? A T minus one means A six. We are doing for F seven, right? So A T minus one will be A six. A six is fourteen thousand five twenty two minus F T minus one. That is fifteen thousand again into the alpha. Students, alpha factor is given to you in the question. Yes, that is nothing but zero point zero sixty two. Correct. So I'll write down here zero point zero sixty two, and let's see what is the EMA that comes at the end of date six, which will obviously be the forecasted value for end of date seven. That is the next period. Correct. So on your calculations, fourteen thousand five twenty two minus fifteen thousand into point zero sixty two plus fifteen thousand. If you do, we get fourteen thousand nine seventy point. 364. Okay, 14,970.364. Children, what is this value? This value is nothing but the average, the exponential moving average as an end of period six, as a forecast for the next period. Correct. So for the next period, the next period is which date, students? The next period they are telling you is the date seven because here also there is trading happening. So I'll write down here date seven. Students, for date seven, can I say the forecast we already have? Fourteen thousand nine seventy point three sixty four. Correct. Now what we need to do is get the actual value of Date seven. Once date seven comes to an end, because this fourteen thousand nine seventy point three sixty four was calculated when day seven, date seven has not yet happened. Correct. Date seven has not yet happened. Date six end only we calculated that. Let us now see what actually date seven brings. Okay. So now students, let us take the EMA at end of date seven. End of date seven EMA must be the forecast for the next working period. I hope you understand, students. The next working period after date seven, if you see. Eighth and ninth are no working periods. The next working period obviously is date ten. So I will write here forecast for date ten will be equal to correct. It will be forecast of date seven plus actual of seven minus forecast of seven into the alpha. Everyone follows. So students, tell me why am I not taking F nine year in the calculations? Because the previous working day T minus one year literally is not nine, but it actually goes to seven because eighth and ninth are like no working dates. In fact, these are dates, right? The working day immediate previous working day is seventh date only. I hope you understand. So tell me what will write here F seven F seven students is fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy point three sixty four. Correct. Plus, what is A seven? A seven comes to fourteen thousand nine twenty five minus F seven fourteen thousand nine seventy point three sixty four. The whole into zero point zero sixty two. That is the alpha. So let's take the calculations now. Fourteen thousand nine twenty five minus fourteen thousand nine seventy point three sixty four into zero point zero sixty two plus fourteen thousand nine seventy point. 364 it comes to 14967.55 i'll write down here 14967.55 everybody following 
and what is this student this is the exponential moving average you calculated at the end of date 7 which will therefore become the forecast for the next period that is period 10 everybody following so for period 10 the forecast we already have is 14,967.55 students I hope you understood now you will write the actual value of date 10 that is this value and like that the story will go on and on you have to calculate this particular EMA calculations okay for each of these working periods I hope you understood students I will now straight away take you to the ICEI material where I'll show you their presentation of how they calculate exponential moving averages students the first moving average we got is 14,970.364 can I show you that students please pay attention now yes so this is your old practice manual of security analysis chapter of ICEI students this is exactly that question correct so I'll take you straight to the solution I'll show you how they do it please pay attention see for them their calculation methodologies might be little different but we will be able to exactly get the same answer and don't absolutely worry about it yes end of the day they are doing the same thing it is just that the structuring is a bit different so they are saying on date 6 okay on date 6 how much EMA we got students we got 14,970.364 how much are they getting 14,970.364 everybody following that students becomes the forecast for the next day everybody following they call it as EMA for the previous day I calculate EMA on the previous day and say it is the forecast for the next day I hope you understood so next day that is date 7 students can you see for date 7 we have got the EMA as 14,967.55 can you see this 14,967.55 what have they got 14,967.55 as the EMA for date 7 which becomes the forecast for the next period as you see that is date 10 in this fashion they have calculated the entire question I need not now waste much of your time in telling you how each one of these must have been calculated it's very very simple yes of course these are calculated earlier year only and these calculations formula I already shown you ft is equal to ft minus 1 plus bracket at minus 1 minus ft minus 1 the whole into alpha everybody clear now one last thing I'll tell you students please listen to this last line they're saying give detailed analysis on the basis of your calculations students the detailed analysis what ICAI has done is see please pay attention here they are saying conclusion the market is bullish why do they say so the market is likely to remain bullish for short term to medium term if other factors remain the same on the basis of this indicator EMA the investors can take a long position they are saying so because can can you see here that yes from 15,000 the graph went to 14,970 from 14,970 it again went down to 14,967.55 but from there on can you see it has only increased which means if you can visualize the exponential moving averages graph slightly it has gone down but then it is taking a bullish trend that is why they are saying that the market is bullish kindly take a long position long position means basically invest in the market your investment values will increase that is what they are saying students I hope you understood this particular explanation of this question very simple it is you must all be having the practice manuals with you all correct I will also be flashing the solution of this entire thing on your screens now you can pause the video and copy down the solution if you want yes so thank you very much students I hope you understood this video on exponential moving averages yes it's a simple concept I have explained to you in depth all the aspects which are necessary as a CA final student to know about this particular concept and more importantly about this question students that is there in the old practice manual this question on exponential moving averages students I hope you understood the entire explanation I thank you very very much I will be coming up with one more video definitely on another concept which is named as efficient market hypothesis I will show it to you here only see as I told you at the start of the video the immediate next question is this and I'm very sure many of you are feeling happy just by looking at this question yes sir we want this because I know this has been an issue for CA final students people are not able to grasp what exactly is happening in this question don't worry students I will be explaining everything to you in detail whatever intense statistical parts are there there I will ask you to take the numbers and take the formulas and go ahead but as far as the financial part of this entire question is necessary for you to understand that I will teach it to you in depth okay so efficient market hypothesis is my next video yes see you there thank you very much take care goodbye